Algebra 1, 6.1b, factoring polynomials, factoring terms with a common factor. So remember, factors are what we multiply together to get a product. 2 and 3 would be factors, 6 would be the product, okay? So we're going to factor out. When we multiply a monomial by a polynomial, we use the distributive property to multiply each term of the monomial to each term of the polynomial. The 2a gets distributed to each of the terms in the second polynomial, and the 3 would get distributed to each term of the second polynomial. To factor, we do the reverse. It's the reverse of the distributive property, and factor out a common factor. In 5a plus 15, we ask ourselves, what do 5 and 15 have in common as factors? 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. So we can use the 5 as our common factor, and 5 times a is 5a, and 5 times 3 is 15. So that would be the 5a plus 15. 5 is the common factor for 5 and 15. We reverse the distributive property, and we take this 5 and this 5, and we put them as 1 5 in front of the parentheses, and then we use the a plus 3 inside parentheses. See? If we use the distributive property on this now, it would equal the 5a plus 15 that we started with. See? 5a plus 15. We get right back to our original problem. See? If we multiply or factor, we can compare them. When we multiply, we go to a product, and when we factor, we go from a product. See? And remember, factor means divisor. We could use any of these as a divisor for 6, couldn't we? So if we have 2a b squared plus 2, we know these are multiplied, right? And we would use the distributive property, so it would be 2a times b squared, and then 2a times 2. And we'd get 2a b squared plus 4a. If we factor, we're going to start with this. We're going to start with the product, and we're going to open it up like this. See? So we get our product, 2ab squared plus 4a, and what can be multiplied by 2a to equal this? Because see, 2a is the common factor, because this also has an a. That's the common factor we're going to use. And I'll explain this a little bit more at the end. We'll talk about um, making factor trees, okay? So 2a times b squared would get us this 2ab squared, and 2a times 2 would get us that 4a. We take the 2a, we put one of them in front of the parentheses, and then we do the b squared plus 2 inside parentheses. See? Now we can say we've factored out 2a. We can factor by greatest common factor. Here's our factor trees. I don't know if you remember this from grade school, but we've got this big long polynomial, and it's got coefficients of 6, 9, and 12, and it's got exponents, doesn't it? on the variables. We ask ourselves, what are the factors of 6? 2 and 3. What are the factors of 9? 3 times 3. What are the factors of 12? 2 times 6, and 6 can be broken into 2 times 3. What do they all have in common? The common factor is 3. And we scan each term for the greatest common factor that they have. Next, we look for the greatest common power of the first variable x. In this case, it's going to be x squared, because see, we've got x to the second power, x to the second power, and x to the fourth power. And if we made a tree for this, it would be 2 times 2, wouldn't it? So what they've got in common is a 2. So we're going to use x squared as the factor for the x. So that means we've got 3 and the x squared together, okay? x squared, x squared, and x to the fourth have x squared in common. Because we can multiply x squared times x squared to get the x to the fourth, can't we? The last thing we do, because we notice that there's a y here, is we scan the terms for the greatest common power of y. And in this case, it's just going to be a y because we've got 
a two, a three, and this is wide of the first, isn't it? And two, three, and one, the only thing that they have in common is one. One times two is two, one times three is three, and one times one is one. So they only have one in common. And we don't need have to write the one, do we? So we're just going to use a y. So now we add it to what we had, and we end up with 3x squared y as the common factor for this big polynomial, okay? So we've scanned each term for common factors and common powers, and we now have 3x squared y. We can factor out 3x squared y from our original polynomial. I rewrote it here. And we think, what can 3x squared y be multiplied by to equal each of these terms? So 3x squared y, what would we multiply it by to get that term? It's already got the x squared, but it's missing one of the exponents for the y, isn't it? And we need a 3 times 2 to make the 6. So because we need a 2 to get to the 6, and because the, this y needs a 1 to become a 2, so that it could be like this term, we end up with 2y as what we need to multiply it by. See? What do we need to multiply 3x squared y to get this term? Well, 3 times 3. So we know our coefficient's going to be a 3. x squared is already here, so we don't even need to list it, just like we didn't need to list it there. It's already there. But y is only a y to the first power, and we need it to be y to the third power. So this is going to have to be y to the second power. If we multiply these two together, we'll get that one. See? Then we have 12x to the fourth y. What does 3x to the second y need to be multiplied to become this one? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, so we know we've got a 4. And we've got x to the second power, but this is x to the fourth power. So we need an x to the second power to be able to multiply to that one to get to that x to the fourth. And it's already got a y1 to the first power, just like this one does, so we don't need to list the y. If we multiply these two together, we'll get that one. See? So we're coming from products to an opened up problem, aren't we? See that? Now all we have to do is take this 3x squared y away from each one of the front of these and put one of them right here in front of the parentheses and then put these guys in the parentheses. They're already in parentheses. We just need to put them into one big one together with the operation signs that they have. See? It might even say minus, you know, one of them. In this case, they're all plus, okay? So now we end up with 3x squared y multiplied by 2y plus 3y squared plus 4x squared. Now we can say we've factored out the common factor of 3x squared y. See? Remember, the greatest common factor is just the greatest common divisor. All right? So here's the greatest common factors from a factor tree. If we had 4, 16, and 32... We break this down into what times what equals 4, so 2 times 2. And for 16, we get 2 times 8. The 8 breaks into 2 times 4, and the 4 breaks into 2 times 2. For 32, it breaks into 2 times 16, then 2 times 8, and the 8 can break into 2 times 4, and the 4 can break into a 2 times 2. Because this 4 is so small and it's only got a 2 times 2, 2 ends up being the greatest common factor for 4, 16, and 32. That's the greatest common factor for those three numbers. Let's look at 26, 39, and 52. What's the greatest common factor for these three numbers? 26 can be broken into 2 times 13. 39 can be broken into 3 times 13, and 13 is a prime number, so we can't do anything with that, right? That's as small as it's going to get. 52 can be broken into 2 times 26, and 26 can be broken into 2 times 13. So the greatest common factor is 13 for these three numbers, 26, 39, and 52. See? If you have to make these little trees, do it if it makes your life easy. Okay? Just get some scratch paper and do it. Now you know when it's not factored when you see a plus sign or a minus sign here. It's got to be right up against the parentheses. Then it's factored. We know it's factored when it's a product, not a sum or a difference, okay? Now, if you need some extra help, try looking in this description for links to the previous similar or helpful videos on this topic, okay? And we're going to talk about our next video, 
which is going to be polynomials that are relatively prime. Relatively prime. Hmm. I'll see you at 6.1c. Bye.